got a strong on the ball. Turn you to spies and cold. What's going on guys? It's King Tuts Pro. Welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In today's video, I want to show you how to create this super cool AI warp transition effect. But if I push play, it's going to look something that looks like this. And this is the original video from Emily Chapa called Lock In. Link is going to be in the description if you guys want to watch it. I think you guys can get really creative with this using Playground AI, which is the website we're going to be using in today's video. I'm not sponsored by them at all in today's video. I want to use this frame as our effect. So if I go back and I push play, it's a few seconds long. So I want this effect to start here. I'm going to press M to add a marker so I know exactly where this frame is. And I'm going to go over to the top. I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go to share. I'm going to go to save current frame. If you don't have this, just click on add destination and this will bring up a new window. Save current frame. Click and drag that to the list here, anywhere on the list. If you click on that preset, you can change the image type. So change that from TIFF to JPEG. Scale image to preserve aspect ratio. I'm going to just turn that off. Five File, share, make sure everything looks good, and then give this a name, save it to your desktop, and then we're gonna upload that image to Playground AI. Link is in the description. All right, so I'm now in Playground AI, and this is the community tab. So when you create an account, it's completely free. What we're gonna do though is go down to over here, just click on the down arrow and go to create on board and you're going to click on import image to edit so go ahead and select the image that we exported from final cut pro which is this one here again it doesn't have to be final cut pro as long as you just take a screenshot of that uh, frame that you want to use and then click open then it will reference this image and then you can add a description or a detailed description of what you want to change so in this case i'm going to go ahead and copy and paste in the prompt that i used before and you guys can also use that as well i will leave it in the description so you guys can use the same one so you can create a similar effect to this one so I'm gonna do that right now okay so I just pasted in the text and this is the prompt so medieval statue style texturize and realistic you can separate this with commas if you want to but it doesn't really matter I think it does a pretty good job knowing what you're typing in but you can add in a lot more keywords to get it really stylized and to get it to look how you want it if you go down to exclude from image this is right now turned off but if you turn it on you can put in keywords or text that you don't want part of the image, but I'm going to have that unchecked. And then over here on the right side, which is in my opinion, the most important part is the sliders for strength and the quality and details. If you drag the string slider to the left, this will be closer to the image over here, our original image. But if you drag the slider to the right, it'll start to reference images closer to what you've typed in here. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be saving each image, but we're going to be gradually increasing the slider and saving each image. The reason we're gonna be doing that is we're gonna be pretty much stitching all the images together. Quality and details, we're gonna keep this at 46 because if you go more than 51, uh, you do have to pay for the premium or a pro plan, but I think for what we're doing, 46 is totally fine. And we're gonna hit generate. And you're gonna notice now that it's going to do its best to generate or come up with an image that looks like this and uses our image. And you're gonna see it's going to look really weird at first that's kind of what you want to happen. So if you click on the full screen button here and you right click and click on save image as, you wanna save this to your desktop. So I'm gonna just name this one and we're gonna start saving these images. So we're gonna to go to three and we're gonna go to three and a half and click generate. You're gonna see it takes a few seconds. So again, we're gonna <laughs> save image. I know it looks really weird, but trust me, it's gonna look really cool. So zero two, save. And we want about 12, maybe 10 to 15 images if you really want a good effect. So we're gonna go to four and a half. I'm gonna hit generate. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up and just go to where it starts to look a lot more like our prompt. All right guys, so now around this, between like eight to 10 is where you really start to see it start to look really different and it's starting to look more like what we've typed in, which is what we want. So we're gonna go ahead and save this image as well. So for some reason now the dog's gone. <laughs> Poor dog, but I think this is fine. So we'll go to 11. What we're gonna do is go and import those images. So go to file and import media. So I saved it to my download. So I'm gonna go ahead and just import all of those, hold shift and click all of the uh, images and click import selected. And then they should appear in here. What I like to do is switch this to the list view. And then if I click the first one and hold shift and click the last one, and you just click and drag and move this right above the clip in the timeline and then just let go. We're gonna select and make sure that they're in order. And they're gonna hold option G 
and we're going to group them and create a compounds clip and we're going to name this statue or something and click OK. Then we're going to press command R and then go to the end where you can see this little black line. Click and drag this in and then if I zoom in and I push play, yeah, we want this a lot quicker. For this one, we might want to go pretty quick because we didn't use that many. So, oh, there we go. So now you can kind of see what it looks like. And it looks so, so cool. So another way to create really cool transitions is gonna be from the M Music Video 2 plugin from Motion VFX. So I do wanna give a big special thanks to them for sponsoring this portion of the video. So here you can see a really cool before and after with the plugin applied. And the ones that I'm using in this particular plugin is called the Film Emulation and the Diffusion Title. You can easily find that by going over to the titles over here. The way this works is you just find one that you like. So you have camera movements, you have film mats, overlay effects, photos, slideshows, typography. And on top of that, if you go over to the effects here, you can also find the same plugin here. So you just click and drag this directly above the timeline. You're going to see it's creating a really cool diffusion look just before and after. And the cool thing is you can stack multiple effects on top of each other. So here's the diffusion one. And then here's the film emulation enabled together to create a really cool and unique effect. They have a ghosting effect. So if I drag this one above, so if I push play, this is going to be the ghosting effect. But they have a bunch of plugins and not only just effects, but they also have titles. They have toolkits for if you're a YouTuber, they have a bunch of really cool toolkits to help you create content for your YouTube channel. And not only for Final Cut Pro, but they also have them for other applications like DaVinci Resolve. So that'll be it for this video. If you found this video helpful whatsoever, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, and turning on the bell notification so you don't miss out on a video like this. With that being said, I'll catch you next time.